What is up everyone and we are back with another guide about PSO2 New Genesis. Today we're going to be talking about Ranger and giving my experience as a 3500 hour Ranger main. I played Ranger since PSO2 got released in the global version and I'm continuing to play Ranger in New Genesis. We're going to be covering why I picked Ranger, rifles and launchers, the best weapons and best multi-weapons, skill trees, subclass, exploration farming, PSC burst farming, and gigantics farming. So this video is going to be quite long and if you want to skip ahead and go to different sessions those will be listed in the timestamps below. So why did I pick Ranger? I picked Ranger mainly because as a Destiny 2 player, a Call of Duty player, I love weapons and rifle fits my need. Besides that in vanilla PSO2, the original one, there was a skill tree that allowed you to dodge roll. This made us nearly invincible all the time, move faster than everybody else and it looked absolutely amazing. Needless to say, Ranger is not the strongest in the game, but it is still capable of dishing high amounts of damage. Ranger brings to the table Blight Rounds, that boosts everyone's damage by 20%, the best support skill in the game. Then it also has Blight Rounds Reinforced that increases that by an additional 25%. So 120% times 125% gives us 150% bonus damage for everybody. Ranger is a must for Gigantics and boss fights. Ranger's rifle is only one of three that has proximity damage range. Rifle deals 110% damage up close, and when you hit the optimum proximity range, your crosshair or reticle turns orange. At this range, you deal 120% damage. Then when you are further away, it turns back to white, and you deal the base 100% damage. This stacks with critical damage, as critical deals the maximum damage you can, plus 20%. So, if you were to deal critical damage in optimum proximity range, you will deal 142% damage. Then stack on top of blight rounds and your damage will nearly double when you hit the spot that blight rounds affected. Rifle isn't that strong but it provides damage support to everyone while doing decent damage. So if this class fits your playstyle, I would highly recommend it. So let's cover the rifle. Rifle has homing darts, the absolute best skill in the game for farming low leveled mobs. That is because when strong enough, you can kill up to 9 or 10 enemies per cast. Homing darts range is quite far and like the word implies it is a homing attack. So you can run up to an enemy, do a 360 spin and attack all enemies within range. Rifle also has raising shot. It is similar to posterior blast in vanilla PSO2. Raising shot is a charged photon art that deals significant damage. But this photon art drops off at fully charged mode because enemies hitboxes make the additional hits deal low damage. So in my opinion, it is faster and stronger to quickly tap this photon art instead of doing a charged shot. You can do significant damage to some enemies as a charged photon art, but in most cases, tapping it is much stronger. Rifle's last photon art is Blaze Shot. This turns your rifle into a machine gun dealing decent damage while allowing you to move quickly. I use this photon art while dodging or trying to get myself into optimum proximity range. Rifle's weapon action moves you forward or whatever direction key you're holding while shooting 4 times. You also gain PP per hit and natural PP recovery. On top of that, you get invincibility frames while doing so if you unlock the slide shot advance on your skill tree. I use this while trying to get myself into optimum proximity range or to dodge attacks while dealing damage and recovering PP. It is a useful tool in the rifle's arsenal. Then there's Rifle's Dash Attack that spins you forward and shoots a strong blast that pierces enemies. This is about 8 times as strong as a single basic attack shot. I only use this attack while moving from one group of mobs to the next as it deals good damage and recovers PP. Lastly is Rifle's Step Attack. It deals about 25-30% to more damage than a full basic attack while also increasing your PP. It looks cool, but overall I don't see this used as often as the weapon action deals more damage and also gives you invincibility frames. To maximize DPS as a ranger, in my opinion, it is best to spam your blight rounds in the air and then cancel out of it by spamming jump. For PC users, I spam blight rounds while spamming the spacebar. Then when blight rounds is on cooldown, I either move using weapon action if my PP is low or I use homing darts if there's a lot of enemies nearby. If there's only a single target, I spam raising shot. However, for single target bosses, I opt to use launcher as launcher is much stronger for single target DPS. Launcher has a photon art called Fear Eraser or Kamehameha, which is the laser beam that deals insane damage to all enemies within its path. There is no limit to how many enemies this can hit in a row, and its range is quite far and its AoE is decent. This skill is necessary in farming for PSE Burst because PSE Burst spawns 
endless enemies, but it has a cap so you have to kill the spawn enemies as fast as possible in order for more to spawn. This is where this comes in handy as it can kill enemies within seconds allowing you to maximize your PSE burst. I'll go more into detail about PC burst farming in that section of this video. Here Eraser has a one time PP cost and then a channeling PP cost. Overall this is a go to DPS full tunnel as over time it is the strongest. Launcher also has fallen impact that launches a rocket into the air and after a second it hits an AOE at the target area 8 times. This photon art cannot be spammed, so if you're using it in rapid succession, the most current falling impact will cancel out the oldest one. So to get the most out of this photon art, you need to cast falling impact, and while it's dealing damage, do other attacks or photon arts and then cast falling impact again. This is considered the worst photon art that the launcher has because of the attack delay. If you don't time it correctly, the enemy can move away, leaving this photon art nearly useless in most cases. Lastly is Multi-Launch, a strong single target photon art that hits 9 times and then launches a strong 10th attack. While this photon art looks cool, its damage falls off to Fear Eraser when taking into consideration PP cost per damage. If you're trying to finish off a boss or need to move while using a photon art to dodge, this photon art fits your needs. If you want to stay stationary while dealing the most DPS, Fear Eraser is a better option, however that leaves you open to attack. Now let's cover Launcher's basic attacks. Launcher's basic attack is an AoE attack that deals decent damage while recovering PP. You can also charge it up to hit 5 times in a massive AoE area. There is a skill called Launcher Charge Grouping that when you are charging your basic attack and use a directional key it will group all those 5 attacks into one. As overpowered this may sound, it is pretty bad and you will deal more damage doing basic attacks than charging up and using Launcher Charge Grouping. You would also think that your PP will recover per hit, so if that's 5 hits, that is 5 PP recovered, but you only PP recover similar to a basic attack. So for me, I do not use Launcher's Charge Attack, as there are better options. Dash Attack Launcher's Dash Attack is a little stronger than a basic attack and really only used while dashing between groups of enemies. Then there's Step Attack. It is just like Rifle Step Attack. You dodge and right after you dodge, you press a normal basic attack to activate Step Attack. Its damage is decent and I really only use this when I want to move quickly around the target. In terms of DPS and PP recovery, attacking normally with the launcher nets you higher DPS than step attack because step attack requires you to dodge and then activate step attack which moves you in a certain distance and then finally attacks. So if you want a DPS or PP recovery, basic attack is always a better option. But if you want to move in large distances in a short time period, step attack is a good option for you. Launcher's weapon action places a mine on the target and then after hitting that enemy multiple times it exposed dealing damage and recovering huge amounts of PP. This weapon action is one of the best ones because you can easily regain PP while using Fear Eraser. Just cast Launcher's weapon action and then use Fear Eraser. After a while the mine will explode recovering your PP. You can even gain more PP while using multi-weapons. Let's get straight into multi weapons Multi-weapons is when you combine two of the same weapon series together so you can use the weapon action of the second weapon. For example, a forces rifle can be combined with a forces wire lance. You cannot combine a forces rifle with a resurger launcher. If you combine two weapons together and the second weapon cannot be used on your main or subclass, its full tunnel or technique cannot be used, but its weapon action and basic attacks will always be available to be used. For launchers, the best multi-weapon to use is using a Talus. That is because its weapon action hits 18 times and each hit recovers 2 PP each, recovering up to a total of 36 PP. This weapon action is a homing attack, but if you lock onto an enemy, it will aim for that enemy. If you don't lock on, there is a chance it's gonna miss. Now if you have an offensive or active PP recover, it would apply to the Talus' weapon action. That is why for launcher, Valto Launcher is the best when combined with Valto Talus. That is because its potential boosts your offensive and natural PP recovery up to 15%. So instead of getting 36 PP from Talus' weapon action, you instead get 41 PP every cast. On top of that, Valto series is extremely cheap compared to the Strega series. If you wanted to get a fixed attack level 5 on a Valto series, they run you around 1 to 2.5 million. But on the Striker series, no one is willing to sell a fixed attack level 5 for anywhere near that price. 
Another recommendation for multi-weapon setup is a rifle plus launcher. This allows you to use blight rounds and use fear eraser immediately after. While this is good, a talus launcher is the absolute best for DPS. Other people combine rifle with wire lance because its weapon action grabs a hold of enemies and flings you to it. There are many different weapon combinations to fit different playstyles, but those are the ones I want to mention. Now let's talk about the best series to choose for your weapons. For rifle choices, I went with the Forces series because it's the strongest and its potential creates a barrier that provides damage resistance up to 50% when you are at max HP. This allows you to tank most boss hits, like when you're fighting Gigantics or doing new Qs. But this only works at full HP, so every time you get hit in a boss fight, it is best to heal in order to activate that barrier again. Resurger Rifle is good if you want a multi-weapon because this series has all the weapon types, unlike the Forces Rifle that only combines with Wired Lance, Twin Daggers, and Rod. For Launcher, like I said before, I use the Vialto series to combine my Launcher and Talus while regaining 50% more natural and active PP recovery. Now let's talk about the skill tree. First are the essentials in my opinion. First up is Blight Rounds. You need to max this. It fires a bullet that increases damage dealt to that spot, and that is the main reason why everybody loves rangers in their groups. It increases every hit at that spot by 20%. Next is Blight Rounds Reinforce. This boosts Blight Rounds even more at that spot when it hits more than 100 times, it will boost it further by an additional 25%. In total, when active, your attacks will deal 50% more damage. Next is Slow Landing Attack and Slow Landing Charge. These together allow you to fall slowly while attacking or charging a photon arm. Next is Sticky Bomb Quick Reload. This shortens the cooldown of launcher weapon actions to 30 seconds. This is essential because launcher's weapon action recovers massive amounts of PP and the more you can use it, the more PP you can gain. Lastly, in the essential category is Slice Trap Advance. When you use rifles, weapon action, you get invincibility frames. This makes it on par with dodge and you can shoot at the same time. Next are the other skills. Rifle Grenader allows your weapon action to shoot a grenade dealing 400 to 500% damage with a 30 second cooldown. While it sounds good, in practice it is just okay. I feel like it would benefit from a damage boost since you can only do it once every 30 seconds. It also regenerates around 20 to 30 pp which is decent. Then there's spread shot and spread shot quick getaway. Spread shot is basically a shotgun blast that is charged by dealing only rifle damage. It does not work with launcher damage so depending on your playstyle it can be worth it or not. I put points into it because there is not much to choose from. Spread shot quick getaway just allows you to have invincibility frames and move forward towards the target when you use it. So if you get spread shot, get this to increase its effectiveness. Then there's launcher charge grouping. Charges your launcher's basic attack to 5 hits in a forward direction. While this sounds good, in practice it is not that great. I put a point into this because I wanted to test it out. 5 hits sounds like a lot of damage and recover a lot of PP but it is nearly the same as the basic attack for DPS. Lastly are the passive skills, Bad Condition Ward which makes you more resilient to status ailments. This is the last calculation in determining resistances. For example, if the chance of you getting status ailment is 100%, this will reduce it to 50% at max level. It works great if you want to use the GN armors because they increase your chance of getting status ailments by 50% for each armor. If you want to learn more about ailment resistances, that video is listed in the description down below. Then there's bad condition reduction. This reduces the duration of status ailments. I put 1 into this because at one point it reduces by half, and the next point only improves it by 4%. Next are the subclasses. There are only really two top tier choices, and that is Force, then Gunner. The other choices are useful, but Force and Gunner stand apart from the rest. Remember, this is only for our current PSO2. If more classes gets released, this might not be up to date. First up is the Gunner subclass. Gunner subclass is good if you want to have assault rifle skills like spread shot and don't have the skill points to pick it up. Since Gunner's main weapons are twin machine gun and the assault rifle, you can use Gunner to pick up skills for the assault rifle. That is why I leveled my gunner to max level because in the future there should be more skills that affect rifles. And instead of spending skills in my main rifle skill tree, I can use gunner and pick them up instead. 
Gunner's passive skills are attack PP recovery that increases your offensive or active PP recovery by 20%. This PP recovery is only when you do attacks that recover PP. This is not natural PP recovery when standing still or walking. Then there's Overwhelm. Recover up to an additional 20% offensive PP recovery when hitting enemies that are not bosses. While Gunner is a decent subclass, that is nothing compared to Force. Force has PP conversion. It increases your natural PP recovery by 600% for 30 seconds, but 20% of your max HP is dealt in damage, but this can be negated by just healing. Then there's PP conversion increase that increases your PP conversion charge by 1, so you can cast it twice instead. Next up is PP recovery boost. Increase your natural PP recovery by 150%, and eradication PP gain. This skill makes it so you recover 5% of your max PP every time an enemy near you dies. This skill is extremely useful for farming as we will discuss in the next sections, and it is the sole reason why Force is the best subclass for Ranger in my opinion. You can also pick up Barta Blot and Zondi Clad if you like to use Force weapons as well. Lastly, this brings us to the Talus skills. Because we use Talus on our launcher, we want to maximize Talus weapon actions. Tricky Capacitor only gets charged when you attack with Talus, so if you do use Taluses, then feel free to pick this up. I don't, so I don't use it. There's also Talus Bloom Revoke. Only get this if you use techniques. If you don't, it's useless. Lastly is Floating Pillbox Molten Rock. When you cast Talus's weapon action when you're not moving, it changes its attack to attack nearby enemies. However, its PP recovery is changed to 1 per hit. This can out PP recover its single attack form when hitting more than 2 enemies. If you only hit 2 enemies or less, it is best to not get the skill. Because of that, I opted not to pick up the skill because I use Talus's weapon action only when bossing. However, the skill can be useful in PC burst, but overall, eradication PP gain will make it so you have endless amounts of PP. Now that you know everything about Ranger, how do you apply this to farming? First up is solo farming, and like the name implies, you are farming by yourself, and it's one of the best ways to farm Masetta. This is done with Ranger's Photon Art Homing Dart. It can attack up to 9 or 10 enemies at once, allowing you to kill everything in one hit and move to the next group of enemies. This is by far one of the best solo farm methods in my opinion. In the future when you can one hit kill higher level enemies with this skill, it will be even better. When solo farming, I pick up the subclass Forest with Eradication PP Gain because it makes it so I never run out of PP and I can run around from group to group killing them with homing darts and recovering more PP than I lost. The next farming is Gigantix farming. As a ranger, our Photon Art Fear Eraser is our best tool as it does the highest consistent damage. When I attack Gigantix, everything comes into play. My Vile Toad, Launcher Talus, my Ranger Skill Tree, and my Force Subclass. What I do is I use Launcher's Weapon Action to place a mine on the target. Then I use the Talus Weapon Action without loading Pillbox Motor Rock because in most cases you're going to only hit one enemy and that enemy is the Gigantix. This helps me recover 40 PP over time with the help of my potential. Then I use Fear Eraser and I hold that button down. Eventually, Launcher's Weapon Action Mine will explode recovering my PP, all while Talus's Weapon Action is recovering my PP at the same time. Depending on your PP, you can use Fear Eraser up to 30 seconds. This 30 seconds is critical because Ranger Skill Sticky Bomb Quick Reload sets your launcher's weapon action to a 30 second cooldown. When you get to 0 PP, launcher's weapon action should be ready to use again with Talus's weapon action. So since you have 0 PP at the time, you can either use PP conversion to recover it or attack normally to get max PP. Then the cycle repeats itself. Launcher's weapon action, Talus's weapon action, then Fear Eraser, and PP conversion or basic attacks at the end of the cycle. Don't forget to use Blight Rounds on weak spots too. And that is how to maximize your DPS as a ranger when you're farming for Gigantics. My last section is PSC Burst farming as a ranger. PSC Bursts are when you reach a 5 gauge on your PSE gauge, triggered by completing a T trial at 3 or 4 gauge. PSC Burst spawns a set amount of enemies until they are killed and it responds more until the PSE gauge reaches 0. 
So your goal is to maximize your PSC burst kills to get more drops, more EXP, and more Meseta and Ranger is the absolute best at this. Some people say if you kill non-E and T enemies, your PSE burst will fall. Some say it doesn't fall, but nobody knows the exact answer and some people just say it's random. I don't know the answer so I'm gonna go with what I know and that is to hit E and T trial until you reach that 3 to 4 gauge and when you do, hit a T trial to trigger a PSE burst. So when you finally reach a PSE burst, you have two choices as a ranger. Spam a homing darts or use fear eraser. Both are solid options. However, whatever you choose, you need to become a 4 subclass because its skill eradication PP gain recovers 5% of your max PP every time an enemy near you dies. This makes it so you never lose photon points. Now using fear eraser or homing darts is the question. If your terrain is rocky and there are hills in the way or trees in the way that would obstruct fear eraser, use homing darts instead. But if your terrain is nearly flat like the lab area and you can hit a lot of enemies, at once, use Fear Eraser as it's easier and stronger. When I use Fear Eraser, I don't go into lock on mode or even over the shoulder mode. If you go into lock on mode, you will be stuck on a single target and that's the worst choice. If you go into over the shoulder mode, you have the freedom to aim as you please, allowing you to aim at groups of enemies. A good choice, but neither of these are the best. That is because over the shoulder mode or free aim mode is extremely slow. Even at the maximum mouse settings, it is still slow and quite a hassle to keep moving your mouse all over in order to aim. It also zooms your camera in making it harder to see enemies. But what I do is I don't lock onto anything and I just use A and D keys to aim Fear Eraser. This method keeps your vision unobstructed and allows you to move your Fear Eraser beam much faster than over the shoulder or free aim mode. Also doing it this way auto aims your attack up and down depending on the enemy's location. So all you have to do is sit back, look for the most enemies, and press A to move left or D to move right. I don't really use Talus Weapon Action because Eradication PP gain already makes sure I recover more PP than I use so I can use Fear Eraser the whole time a PSC burst is active. That is until I hit a PSC Climax and the boss spawns. If the boss that spawns is wholly mobile, I use Rifle and Spam Blight Round. And in between its cooldown, I use Raising Shot or Blade Shot or Basic Attacks in order to recover PP. Now if the boss that spawns is generally stationary, I use my gigantic setup, which is Launcher Weapon Action, Atlas Weapon Action, and Launcher Fear Eraser and Repeat. Now this is one of my longer videos, but I wanted to go into detail about every little thing. There are timestamps in the video below so if you want to rewatch a certain section, feel free to skip through. I know I might have missed some things, or if you want to add more advice, please feel free to comment that down below. And that's it for this video. If you liked this video and it helped you out, please hit that like button and subscribe for more videos. Thank you all for tuning in and listening, and until next time.